What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Have you ever been inside a hobby shop and you saw this totally rad bodacious model car and you wanted to know what was in that box before you bought it? Now here's a really radical 1985 Corvette from MPC, which I want to show you next. And if you can survive to the end of this video, I'm going to show you a really bodacious looking model car kit that you might want to see next. Quit all that jive talking, Trevor. Let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. 1985 was another great year for movie releases. We got ourselves Weird Science, two with Chevy Chase, Fletch, and National Lampoon's European Vacation. The kids got a great Spielberg movie, The Goonies. We got treated to Return of the Living Dead, which was a spoof on Night of the Living Dead. The sequel to Romancing the Stone, Jewel of the Nile. Mel, Gib or Mel Gibson was back again in Mad Max, Beyond the Thunderdome. We got the very beginning of Back to the Future. We got Harrison Ford in The Witness. And Roger Moore was back once again in A View to a Kill. We also got this amazing 1985 Chevrolet Corvette, a sophisticated Chevrolet Super Coupe by MPC. For ages 10 to adult, it's a 125th scale model kit. As we look on the side of the box, we see that they have both English and French on here. Our model kit is molded in red with bright plated parts and colorful custom decals. And these are the many optional accessories that you get in your kit. A choice of factory stock wheels or custom wheels, optional rear spoiler and window louvers, wide radial tires, and a completely detailed suspension and chassis. This model kit was for the modeler of moderate experience. Cement is necessary for assembly. Model may be painted to match the illustration. Paint and cement is not included. And as we just drive this car more into frame, this is the model shown in its actual size. Photos of painted prototype model. This is from 1984 Fun Dimensions, but it's an 85 Corvette, and that's why we've got it here. And there's that great old Fun Dimensions logo. And now taking the lid off our 85 Corvette, we're in for a nice little treat right here. Right away we see this famous red plastic. There's our glass. There's the body with interior and the hood all put on. And here we have the Corvette instructions, which Danny the dog will go over in a minute. There's our nice dashboard and all the red parts trees. Red's always a hard color to actually deal with if you want to paint this anything other than red. Easy enough to paint black and flat black over top, but not so good if you want to paint white. So always remember to use a primer, preferably a light gray before painting white on here. Some people actually will paint this flat black, then paint it light gray, then paint whatever color. Our steering wheel seems to be stuck into this tire, <laughs> just not very good. There's our wheels, and this is a second hand kit that I bought, so hopefully everything's in there. Oh, there's one of the chrome wheels and our seats, and then more tires and other parts. Here we've got our instruction sheet for 1985 Corvette, and as you can see this folds down and you get the engine how to build down here. There's all our symbols for putting the kit together as well as the paint chart. So here we have the Chevy V8 motor. This is the 350 Corvette block and uh, there's the oil pan. We've got our engine block and transmission going together with our oil filter, our valve covers, our cylinder head, front timing chain cover and the water pump. And here you can see each little letter and that refers again to the paint chart. Our engine build continues here in panel 2 with the exhaust manifolds being glued onto the side of the cylinder head and here we have our starter motor being glued in place as well as our fuel pump up front. Panel 3A shows this gigantic Corvette serpentine belt. How would you like to change this crazy thing? If you've done so let us know in the comments below just how hard it is. Anyway there's a whole bunch of the things that go on the back here like our alternator, fuel pump, and uh, other bits and pieces here. Probably power steering as well. And here's the serpentine belt being glued on to the front of our engine. Now there's two options for this engine and uh, the first is to have the stock intake manifold. And here you can see it being glued in place. Then we've got our plenum and it's actually got separate side pieces to the plenum 
So you got to make sure that you put those all in the right spot. And there it goes on to that intake there. Now if you want to build this as the Super Corvette, you can also swap out the stock intake for this custom intake. And there's the other manifold being glued in place. And that's our distributor with the cap on the top. Now here it looks like we've got a lot of injectors going in place. These are like vertical straight up and down, unlike the plenum. And then you've got these neat little caps that go on the top as well. Panel 5 shows our front end steering clip being glued into the frame. And as you can see, everything here is all included, including the uh, kingpins there, and the rack and pinion style steering, as well as the lower A-arms. Panel 6 shows the amazing multi-piece rear axle being glued in place. And there you've got the little drive shaft arms with the double knuckles and then the side supports and the rear leaf spring and suspension as well as this stabilizer bar. Panel 7 shows the multi-piece radiator and fan shroud operation here and as you can see it has one, two, three, four pieces and one of them is a little fan and this will all glue at the front of the chassis. Panel 8 is where we actually drop in the Corvette motor into the chassis and here you can see it goes in place and then we've got our drive shaft there as well as the upper and lower radiator hoses all hooking up to our fan. Panel 9 is where we actually get to glue on the stock exhaust system or use these custom ones that just pop out to the side and then here we've got our spare tire holder going right in place. Panel 10A shows our wheels going into place. Now these ones have the rubber tires and then you've got your stock wheel or your custom wheel. You got the choice of which one you want to use. That would go through the tire after you cut the web out. And then we've got a backing plate and the actual rear of the wheel. Panel 10 shows our wheels being glued onto the axle. So make sure you only put glue in the little hole here and not get it in between because that will just lock your wheels in place. Now panel 11 shows our interior being all glued together. This is fairly simplistic. You've got that bucket in there and then you've got your bench seats going in. They're all one piece. There's no back to them. And then you got a gear shift lever going in, your dashboard in your steering wheel. Now there's a radio in here. So here's some of the songs from 1985. The movie songs were very popular this year as they were also done by a lot of the bands at the time. So you got A View to a Kill by Duran Duran. The Power of Love by Huey Lewis, that's from Back to the Future, of course. Take On Me by Aha. We Built This City by Starship. Money for Nothing, Dire Straits. Would I Lie to You with the Eurythmics. Susudio by Phil Collins. And then We Are the World, the US for Africa campaign thing. And She Was with the Talking Heads. You Spin Me Round by Dead or Alive. And we even had Tarzan Boy by Baltimore. Panel 12 shows our body. Now there's a lot of things to remove. There's these little top pieces on the fenders and this great big thing right in the middle. So once you get that all cleaned up, it should look really, really nice. And then we've got our brake booster and master cylinder being glued in place. There's our battery. Now it's just a top, so that's easy to paint. And then we've got the uh, blower and heater here. So again, really cool stuff. So in panel 13 here, we show all the decals for the inner fenders and everything. And then we've got our glass and you got to break out the little pieces in between the, that little bridge there. Put in the rear window and then the front window. There's our rear view mirror going in place. And uh, we also have these uh, sun visors here. And then we've got our interior tub and the chassis. And then we've got the top of our intake for our plenum here. And all that will go together and then your Corvette will be together as one. Now panel 14A shows how our hood goes together underneath. There's these little hinges that drop into place. And then we've got the top of the fender wells. And all that will go together nicely. Now this part of the car is a little bit tricky. But basically your hood pops in. There's some little pins in here. This is a support rod if you want to have your model with the hood displayed up. And then this is a tricky part. This is a little cover that goes up on the front of the car that's supposed to hide the gap for the uh, hood to open. Now panel 15, you glue in the turn signals in the front of the nose. And then you've got a two-piece mirror here with your glass mirror, which will glue onto the side of the car. Panel 16 shows our rear bumper clip here. And uh, we got our four taillights being glued into these little holes here. Now here's where we start to build our custom Corvette if you wanted to go that route. 
And uh, we've got this chin spoiler which goes up underneath, and then these really cool side pipes which will glue up there. And carrying on with our custom, we've got the louvers which will drop in over that glass, as well as this neat rear spoiler. Now one thing I'll say about this, if you don't want to put these onto this Corvette, these custom pieces, you can always save them for any of these other generation style Corvettes. These parts will fit on as long as it's all 125th scale. Finally, we've got these really cool decals and this is the location for them. These are really 1980s style. We also get these nice license plates. So at the end of the video, I will actually show you what these decals look like. So now let's turn the camera over to Trevor, where he'll show us the red plastic parts. Thank you for that great introduction, Danny. So I was gonna sing like Little Red Corvette by Prince, but there's only one problem. That song came out in 82, not 85. So here we have our Corvette body. And as you can see, this is an actual 80s Corvette because it has those two vertical fin openings. And that's one of the telltale signs if you're uh, trying to spot these Corvettes on the road. Any of the earlier 80s ones had these vents in them. I think up till 86, if I'm correct. Uh, nice little details here. I like the Corvette emblem on the back lid. You can see Corvette or raised letters in the back center here, as well as the tail lights. There is quite a, a lot of flash on this, so you can hear it. Uh, and mold marks up underneath, which you can take care of with that number 16 hobby blade. You'll have to really pay attention in here on that pillar because there are some there and that's where the window is going to be sitting in. Again, underneath some mold marks, but uh, you can easily clean these up. These Corvettes are a little bit tricky to build, like I said, in, or like Danny said in the instructions. Uh, you need to clip these little caps off as well as a center brace, but that did keep everything from warping in the mold, so be thankful that those are there. There's the Corvette license plate on the front in the license plate shroud. Again, really neat model kit. It does go together pretty well. Here's our hood. This is like a giant clamshell, as you can see. Underneath, we do have the fireproof matting, which is nicely molded in. Uh, you will have to get rid of the connection points and the mold lines. But overall, let's see. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because those inner fender thingies are kind of holding this up. But there is a good, it looks like a good fit on this clamshell. So again, not bad. Not bad at all. On this parts tree, we can see the Chevy motor sitting in there, as well as the cylinder heads, the oil pan, and our fan components, the inner front fenders, and uh, exhaust manifolds, as well as our heater motor and our battery. There's that fuel injected part from the other style of fuel injection, and then our rear axles and uh, the rear axle braces and all that jazz. Detail on here is pretty good for an a kit from 83 I think it said <laughs> but yeah overall a really nicely done mold marks again of course but nothing you couldn't fix up with the hobby blade there's the battery and if you watch my battery video recently you'll see this is a different style again actually has two caps that pop off for filling doesn't really show where the uh, terminal points are on this thing though but at any rate, maybe that doesn't matter. Overall, really nice, but remember, you'll need primer in order to uh, paint over this just to block out that red. Here we have our chassis components. Again, really nicely done. And uh, there's that serpentine belt Danny was talking about and our front axle with the lower A-arms and the uh, rack and pinion style steering. There's our drive shaft and the top of the plenum as well as the stock intake and uh, upper radiator hoses. So now let's take a look at that. Again, nice texture and detail on here. It will build up and look really nice. Flipping it over, the mold marks are on the inside. That's where we want them. Don't really want them underneath. So again, really well thought out and nicely done by MPC. Here we have the interior components. We've got the nice Corvette dashboard, the steering wheel, the bucket seats, the little hinges and the gear selector. Now I also have the interior bucket. I'll show that to you in a minute. But there is something I need to show you uh, in just a sec. So there's that dashboard. And again, you can see just how nice it is. This is accurate to that vintage Corvette. It even has those uh, 
vintage style. I do believe these were digital displays in here. Early attempt at digital. Again, really nice. You can see all the vents up top, just like the real thing. And uh, there's those hood hinges. And then we've got the gear selector stick. Now I'm just going to move this off to the side. You can see the uh, front bucket seats. Again, they're nicely done. And they are a one piece. So you just got to scrape down the seam lines that are up and around and, you know, just clean them up nicely. But very, very nice indeed. Now you remember at the beginning of the video when I was taking the parts out of the box and I said that the steering wheel was stuck in that tire? Uh, the bad part is a lot of the rubber in this era, in these kits, uh, over time there's a, a chemical in them that actually will melt the plastic and unfortunately if you can see that steering wheel this thing is like just destroyed so I need a <laughs> another Corvette steering wheel from something. Hopefully I can find one. Um, some kids did build a model of a Corvette and then brought it back to the store <laughs> for whatever reason. So I might be able to get that steering wheel out of there. They made it a glue bomb, so it's going to be interesting. But at any rate, here's the interior tub. And this is quite accurate to the Corvette of that vintage. Even though it is a tub, you can see the door handle in here. So again, it turned out quite nice. I don't know how well this camera is going to pick up red. I know it has troubles with white, <laughs> so at any rate, overall, I would give this uh, really high marks. There's those two cargo hatches in here behind the back seat. So again, really nicely done. Some old marks up here which need to be removed. Overall though, I will give this an A+. Our next parts tree features a lot of the great custom components, like this front lower chin spoiler. There we've got our little flares going on. The rear spoiler, the rear window louvers, our spare tire cover, side mirrors, there's the uh, sun visors, and then we've got our exhaust for the custom and our exhaust for stock. And as you can see, it is quite a nice little set of components. Some mold marks, I do believe, up underneath. Oh, not so bad, really. Again, really cool stuff in here. Really cool. I. I tend to say that line quite a lot. <laughs> so there's some detail on the catalytic converter and we've got our dual exhaust mufflers and then they actually split into four pipes off the back. So again, really cool stuff, really represents the 85 Corvette perfectly. Here's our chrome components for our 85 Corvette. These are the stock wheels and one thing that Danny failed to mention is these little blades are directional. So when you put them on the car, make sure you know which direction they go. They're either going to, when the car goes forward, they're either going to chop this way or they're going to sort of fan this way with the uh, angle. It's all about the angle. There's our custom wheels. Now these are basically based off Ferrari styling. There's our little uh, turn signals for the front and our plenum for the intake, as well as our valve covers here. And over here are all the little trumpets for our, fu our uh, Velocity Stacks, actually for our fuel injection, the other style fuel injection, and our chrome side pipes for the custom, as well as our rear view mirror and mirror inserts. Now these wheels actually came off the bottom. I think someone was testing them. See, there's that Ferrari style with the uh, bolts around the outside and then the five bolts holding the wheel on. And there's our Corvette wheels for 85. Again, very nice stuff. Look at our little velocity stacks poking up. <laughs> Underneath, not really bad on the mold marks. So, again, really nicely chrome plated for the era. And uh, all this chrome should look pretty awesome in your Corvette. Here we have our clear components. And I actually thought that I lost these, but luckily they were there. I do believe they were on a parts tree and someone clipped them off and never installed them, thankfully. But these are the little red taillights. And they do have that nice little uh, ring in them, if you know what I mean. There's our rear window and front window connected with these little braces. Now Danny did say that you are supposed to uh, chop those apart. So again, really nice. And I'm sure I'm glad that those chemical tires did not land on the glass. Because that is the worst. I mean, the other parts like the steering wheel, whatever, I can swap out, whatever. But once you get one of those tires on the glass and it melts like a half circle in there, it's game over. 
And here once again we've got our little friends from the 80s kits from MPC. These are the BF Goodrich Radial TA tires. And these have that neat little bumpy diamond shaped kind of tread on them. So these are non-directional tires. This is sort of just before that era of the uh, directional tire. And there you can see it's got the web still inside so you'll need to cut that out. Once you cut it out it will look like this and you'll get your hole all the way through which you'll be able to put your wheels and wheel backs into. Now I do believe there are two different sizes of these tires. No, maybe not. I think they're all the same. Overall though, these BF Goodrich Real TA tires are quite nice, but as we saw, the chemical will actually melt the plastic. So as a suggestion, I would paint the inner rims maybe with uh, some kind of paint color, just to try to prevent a lot of that, um, you know, etching from occurring inside your wheels. Hey everybody, it's Danny again. So here we've got those neat little decals for our 85 Corvette. And boy, they sure are 85, that's for sure. Take a look at these uh, interesting stripes as they go from light gray to medium gray to dark gray to black. Or actually from the front of the car be black, dark gray, medium gray, light gray. Anyway, they're pretty cool. You got a Michigan plate here that has uh, 333 DDD. Danny Dog, Danny Dog, Danny Dog, and a Chevrolet US number one. And then all these little things, they're going underneath in your front engine compartment. So that's pretty cool that they supplied all those decals. Well, I really hope that you can pick up one of these amazing rides for your model car collection. And if you want to see what model cars I have for sale, check out this cool link over here. It'll take you right to our website. And don't forget to subscribe right down here. Now, as promised, here's a really cool model car video that you should check out next. Well, I hope you can join us next time as we take a look at more of these amazing kits from the 1980s. And until next time, everyone, be excellent to each other.